The boy left an apple on a park bench every day for a homeless old man. But one day he saw a man with bodyguards on the bench. The soft rustling of leaves and the chirping of sparrows made up the morning symphony of the park, where every day began the same for little Daniel. He was only eight years old, but his world was richer and more vibrant than that of most adults. Daniel was different from his peers small, slender, with large brown eyes always hidden behind thick glasses. He walked with a clumsy, childishly hurried gait, as if he were always late for an important meeting in another imaginary world. For Daniel, books were portals to this other world. They took him to distant stars and mystical lands, where he could be anyone an adventurous knight, a brave explorer, or a wise ruler. Even when his mother sighed once again, looking at his worn-out pages, and said, How much longer are you going to read? You've already ruined your eyesight. Look, your friend is throwing pebbles at the window from early morning, calling you to play. But you don't even notice. You don't care at all nothing could distract the boy from his adventures. It's all your upbringing, his father would chime in. When I was his age, you couldn't drag me home. I helped my father, did carpentry, went fishing. You've turned him into an intellectual. He doesn't know anything besides books completely unfit for real life, always lost in the clouds. Family arguments were part of his daily life, and Daniel had learned to find solace in his fantasies. They were his refuge from the harsh reality and constant quarrels between his parents. Every day after school, when most kids his age went out to play, Daniel would hide in the park. Here, under a mighty oak tree that stood like a majestic sentinel by one of the paths, the boy could spend hours reading or simply dreaming, sitting on a bench absorbed in his thoughts. It was mid-September the sun's rays, no longer as hot, gently slid over the leaves that were beginning to turn yellow. He came to the park after school, sat on the bench, took out a new book from his backpack, and immersed himself in reading. This time, it was Eric Knight's lassie in his hands. With each page, he delved deeper into the story of loyalty and courage, which was so important for a boy deprived of true friendship and understanding in the real world. His love for animals became his little salvation. He dreamed of having a dog of his own, with whom he could share his last piece of bread a dog that would be loyal to him until the end. Daniel loved animals dearly and had long been asking his parents to let him get a small dog, but his father was adamant. Again with your nonsense, all they bring is hair and problems. Feed them, walk them, and for what? For fun. No, there will be no dogs in my house, he said irritably. Despite all the boy's pleas and prayers for a new friend, our hero had no choice but to love animals from a distance and study their lives through books and various stories. He had already read halfway through Lassie constantly marveling at her courage, loyalty and ability to overcome any obstacles in her path. But dogs belong to people, and people are led by fate. Sometimes, in a person's life, a time comes when fate strikes too hard, and then they reluctantly bow their head and decide they must sacrifice their pride to keep their family from going hungry. He read in the book how he envied the heroes of these stories, who, unlike him, never felt lonely. This thought only strengthened his desire to one day find such a friend loyal and reliable, like Lassie. Lost in his thoughts, Daniel didn't notice how time silently slipped away and the park began to empty. The only sounds now were the rustling of leaves and the distant hum of the city, which couldn't reach his secluded corner under the oak tree. But it was here, in the shadow of nature's giant, that Daniel found his freedom and solace, returning every day to escape reality. A sudden sound pulled him out of the engrossing world of the book, reluctantly tearing his eyes away from the lines. He slowly looked around. At first glance, nothing had changed. Sparrows chirped merrily, splashing in puddles leaves whispered under playful gusts of wind, and thin women with headphones on were diligently exercising, as if trying to preserve their youth forever. But then, a man sitting on a nearby bench caught his eye. He was dressed carelessly, with a thick beard and worn-out shoes full of holes. Despite his unkempt appearance, the man had a kind face with smiling eyes. The boy probably wouldn't have noticed him if it weren't for one detail next to the man, while wagging its tail playfully, was a large black dog. Well, are you hot, buddy? The vagabond affectionately addressed his companion, slowly stroking its head. Want to play? Here. Take this stick, he continued with a warm smile and waved his hand, throwing the stick as far as he could. The dog immediately dashed after it, wagging its tail widely. It returned very quickly, 
happily wagging its tail and hoping for the game to continue. The dog and its owner were remarkably similar to each other. Both bore the marks of life's trials, the man in his careless clothing and worn-out shoes, the dog in its matted fur. But despite this, they radiated warmth and joy. Their faces, if you can call them that, were full of happiness and contentment, and their eyes sparkled with cheerfulness. Their laughter and joyful glances seemed especially bright against the backdrop of surrounding hardships. After a few throws and catches of the stick, the man decided it was time for a snack. He pulled a loaf of bread, a bottle of water, and a pack of kefir from the pocket of his shabby coat. Carefully breaking the loaf into two equal parts, he handed one to Buddy. Then he opened the bottle of water, poured its contents into a plastic cup, and set it before the dog. He himself began slowly drinking the kefir, occasionally glancing around. After both finished their modest meal, the man turned to the dog and said, That's it. Little one lunch break is over. It's time to get back to business. With these words, he stood up, patted the dog, and headed for the park exit. The dog obediently followed him. The boy, who had been watching this scene, couldn't take his eyes off them. He smiled as he watched their departing figures, and a sense of hope for such a genuine and simple friendship began to grow in his heart. This is what true friendship is, he thought, his eyes shining with contentment. True freedom lies in simple moments of joy. You can sit on an old bench under a mighty oak, share your last piece of bread with a loyal friend, and that will be the essence of happiness. You can play carefree, forgetting all the worries of the world, because there is someone beside you who understands and supports you these thoughts filled his chest with warmth. The boy smiled mysteriously again, imagining a future where he would have such a loyal dog. When I grow up and move out, I will definitely have a dog with whom I will walk here in the park, and we will share every piece of bread, every joy, and every sorrow. However, reality soon reminded him of itself. It was already late evening when he returned home. The boy secretly hoped that his parents would be too busy to notice his long absence. The weather was surprisingly warm for September, and he eagerly anticipated the next day, looking forward to diving back into the world of Lassie's adventures. The park had become a place of regular visits for the boy. He told his parents that he was going to play with friends, but in reality he spent time alone on his favorite bench, diving into new stories and watching the old man and his loyal dog. These two, like punctual actors, appeared in the park every day at the same time, and each day seemed a repeat of the previous one. They played, shared food, and enjoyed each other's company. The boy felt his admiration for the old man growing with each passing day. He marveled at how tenderly and respectfully the man treated the dog, as if it were his equal. The relationship between the old man and his dog seemed to him the ideal of mutual understanding and support, reminiscent of a wise, long-married couple who had long since forgiven each other all possible offenses and simply enjoyed every moment spent together. Day by day, the boy watched this pair, hiding in the shadows of the trees, and each time he saw their happiness, his heart filled with light and warmth giving him the strength to dream and to wait for his own loyal friend with whom he could share the whole world. Today, sitting under the tree, Daniel opened his book again, but his gaze fell on the same bench where he had last seen the old man and his dog. The boy's heart sank when he noticed that the bench was empty. Perhaps they would not return, he thought, and a sense of loss washed over him. After all, he knew so little about those who had briefly become part of his dream world. Suddenly, his thoughts were interrupted by a gentle rustle at his feet. Daniel looked down and saw a small, worn-out figure, a soft toy, apparently lost by someone in the park. He picked it up, feeling the rough texture of old plush under his fingers. It was a small dog with a worn collar, and suddenly it seemed to the boy that this was a sign. Holding the toy in his hands, he thought about how often coincidences in life turn out to be not coincidences at all. Maybe this was a reminder that everyone is destined to find a friend. Maybe it was a reminder that even the smallest act of kindness can change someone's life. Lost in thought, Daniel looked towards the sunset, where the last rays of the sun glided over the leaves of the old oak tree. The wind caught the pages of his book, and the boy thought that perhaps tomorrow he would meet his own dog, his loyal friend. With new hope in his heart, he returned to reading, allowing the rustle of the oak to lull his dreams of the future. The next day began like many others, but for Daniel, 
The crisp autumn air was full of invisible possibilities. The crunching leaves underfoot set the backdrop for his thoughts as he walked along the familiar paths of the park, heading to his favorite secluded spot under the old oak. However, today he chose a slightly different route, which led him to a small shaded corner where an isolated bench stood one he hadn't considered before. This was the bench where the homeless old man usually sat with his loyal dog. The memories of them lingered in the boy's mind. He often found himself thinking that his new friends had brought light into his quiet world. That morning, his mother had lovingly placed an apple in his backpack for a school snack. For a moment, holding it in his hands, Daniel caught himself thinking that this apple could be more than just food. It could be a token of gratitude and friendship. Approaching the bench, he found it empty neither the old man nor the dog was there. Yet, glancing around to make sure no one was watching him, Daniel quietly placed the apple on the bench. It was his silent gesture of kindness, which he hoped would not go unnoticed. Taking a few steps back, he sat down on the ground, from where he could watch the bench. His heart beat in anticipation. Time passed slowly, each minute feeling like an hour. The wind played with the fallen leaves, creating the only sounds in the quiet morning park. Finally, as the sun began to warm, soft footsteps reached his ears. It was the old man and his dog. They approached the bench, and Daniel held his breath. The old man noticed the apple, stopped, and looked around, clearly puzzled. He picked it up, turned it over in his hands, and smiling split the fruit in half, giving one half to his dog. The dog deftly caught the piece and began to chew it with pleasure, while the old man, still smiling, sat down to enjoy his half. It was a simple pleasure, but for the boy it was full of deep meaning. He felt his heart filled with warmth. With his small act, he had touched someone else's life without saying a single word. The boy spent the entire day pondering how even the smallest acts of kindness could change someone's morning or even their entire day. He felt a renewed connection to the world, which often seemed so out of reach. Sitting in the shade of an old oak tree, he realized that even at his young age, he could bring joy and light into the lives of others, just as books had done for him. The day ended, but the echo of his deed continued to resonate in his soul, filling him with confidence for the future. With a firm resolve to continue this new tradition, Daniel already looked forward to his next encounter with the unusual pair who had become a kind of guiding sign in his young life. The soft morning light barely touched the oak leaves as Daniel once again made his way to the park. The past few days had brought him something more than just the usual comfort in his solitude. His encounters with the homeless old man and his dog had become a secret ritual for the boy, with each visit leaving an apple on the bench before they arrived. This morning was cool but pleasant, and the air already hinted at the approach of autumn. The leaves had begun to change color from bright green to golden and copper. The park was almost empty, with only the occasional rustle of squirrels hurrying about their business breaking the silence. Daniel carefully chose the most beautiful apple from the basket in the kitchen, which his mother had filled with fresh fruit the day before. The thought that he was doing something important and meaningful filled his heart with warmth and confidence. Approaching the bench, he gently placed the apple on its cold seat and quickly hid behind a nearby tree. Soon footsteps could be heard. The old man and the dog slowly approached their usual spot. Daniel held his breath, watching as the old man noticed the apple. A smile appeared on his weary face, and sparks of surprise and joy gleamed in his eyes. It was like magic, seeing how a small gesture could bring so much happiness. The old man picked up the fruit and, as usual, split it into two parts. The dog eagerly awaited its portion and happily began to eat. In that moment, Daniel felt an invisible connection between himself and these two beings. He was a part of their world, even though he remained in the shadows. After the old man and the dog finished their modest snack, the man thoughtfully looked toward the tree behind which Daniel was hiding. The boy held his breath. Does he know the thought flashed through his mind? But the old man simply glanced at the tree, smiled and whispered something to his dog before they set off again. Each day spent in the park deepened Daniel's secret acquaintance with the homeless man and his loyal companion. The boy began to notice the small details of their behavior, how the old man talked to the dog, how they played together, and how the dog attentively followed every movement of its owner. These moments became lessons for Daniel about loyalty, friendship, and the simple joys of life. He realized that every encounter, 
Every observation brought him a little closer to understanding what it means to be a true friend, someone who can always be relied upon. That day in the park began as usual for Daniel. The sun had already warmed the air, and a fresh breeze caressed the boy's face as he walked along the familiar path. He was already holding another apple in his hand, fresh, fragrant, with dew drops playing on its skin like tiny stars. As he approached the familiar bench, Daniel suddenly noticed that his usual spot was occupied. The boy's heart raced with anxious anticipation. A young man in an elegant suit was sitting on the bench, and next to him stood a figure in black, who appeared to be his bodyguard. Daniel froze in place, hiding in the shadow of the trees. He couldn't understand who these people were and what they were doing on the bench where the old man and his dog should have appeared at this time every day. The boy squeezed the apple in his hand, feeling his nerves sharpen with surprise and concern. The man on the bench kept glancing at his watch, his expression a mix of anxiety and expectation. The bodyguard stood a little aside, scanning the surroundings with a cold and watchful gaze. Suddenly, the young man grabbed his head, clearly frustrated by something. He whispered a few words to the bodyguard, then stood up and began pacing nervously back and forth along the path. The bodyguard remained in his place, closely monitoring every movement of passers-by. Daniel felt his heart race faster, adrenaline coursing through his veins. Deep down, he yearned to uncover the mystery but the fear of finding himself in an awkward situation kept him in the park's background, behind a curtain of green bushes. With interest and some trepidation, he watched the young man in the expensive suit, who seemed lost in his thoughts, intently staring into the void before him. The heavy atmosphere of uncertainty hung in the air, making each second feel tangibly tense. Minutes passed agonizingly slowly, and with each one, the anxiety in Daniel's chest grew like storm clouds on the horizon. He tried to imagine where the old man and his faithful dog might be. Usually they appeared in the park with enviable regularity, but today their absence became an inexplicable puzzle that Daniel was eager to solve. Maybe they encountered these strangers on their way and decided to avoid meeting them by changing their usual route. The boy pondered, his imagination painting increasingly dramatic pictures. The thought that these people in black might have unclear, possibly even sinister, intentions caused Daniel anxiety. Who are they, and what are they doing here? Why did they choose this bench for their strange meetings? These questions swirled in his head, giving him no peace. The next day, the situation repeated itself exactly as it did on the following days. The man in the expensive suit, along with his security, appeared in the park at the same time every day, standing up and leaving abruptly, leaving behind only a trail of unspoken words and uncertainty. And then, one day, when Daniel once again approached his favorite bench, no longer expecting to meet the familiar park inhabitants, the man suddenly turned out to be nearby. For the first time during all his strange visits, he noticed the boy. This made Daniel startle and prepare for the unpredictable development of events. Hey kid, the man called out to Daniel, his voice unexpectedly soft against his imposing appearance. I know you come here regularly. My people see you here almost every day. Tell me, have you seen an old homeless man with a large black dog in the park? These words caught the boy off guard. Seen him, yes. He hadn't just seen him, he had watched the old man every day, saw how he played with his dog, how they shared a simple meal. But why was this elegant man interested in a homeless person? What could possibly connect them? And why did this suddenly concern him, a little boy so much? Daniel, feeling a lump rise in his throat, swallowed hard and cautiously answered, trying to hide his anxiety and curiosity. Thoughts began to swirl in Daniel's head, leaving behind a haze of doubts and guesses. So, this is who the man had been watching and waiting for all these days. But why does he care about this old man, this homeless person with a dog? The boy pondered, imagining the most dramatic scenarios. Maybe the old man stole his wallet or something even more valuable. And now the man wants revenge, he thought peering into the anxious eyes of his interlocutor. Or maybe he's a representative of some medical clinic, ready to do anything for a valuable catch, as his father mentioned while reading an article about the black market for organs. Daniel remembered how his father said that homeless people often fall victim to such atrocities because of their vulnerable position in society. Maybe these people are after his liver or something else the boy thought with horror, involuntarily clenching his fists. 
A man in a suit, noticing Daniel's gaze filled with fear and suspicion, smiled softly, trying to ease his concerns. He slowly pulled out an old, yellowed photograph from the inner pocket of his jacket. Don't be afraid of me. I come in peace, the man said soothingly, handing the photo to the boy. This is my father. Take a look. Daniel took the photograph and looked closely. It was nearly impossible for him to recognize that the man in the picture was the same person he had met so many times in the park. The image showed an elegantly dressed man with perfectly styled hair and a clean-shaven face. He was holding the hand of a boy who looked very much like Daniel in age. This child, with an innocent gaze and hope in his eyes, was none other than the young version of the serious man in the expensive suit standing before him. You see, kid, my father and I had a falling out many years ago, the man began, his voice full of regret and sadness. I was always hot-tempered and quick to anger, unable to control my emotions. I was rude to my elders, mocked their customs and rules, convinced they were just relics of the past. All their advice on what was right and wrong seemed to me to be mere whims born of stubborn old age. I believed I understood life better than they did, and I was certain of my superiority. He paused for a moment, as if trying to gather his thoughts, then continued. I left my parents' house early, unable to endure their moralizing any longer. I started my own business, thinking that success and money were all I needed for happiness. At first, everything went smoothly money flowed like a river, allowing me to indulge in luxury expensive restaurants, suits from the best designers, the company of influential and beautiful women. My father warned me, advised me to invest in the development of my business instead of squandering it all. But I was blinded by my own arrogance, unwilling to listen to his words. I thought I was at the peak and at the top of the world, and that no obstacles stood in my way. Oh, how wrong I was. The man's voice trembled, and a glimmer of untold grievances and late realizations appeared in his eyes. This story, full of disappointments and youthful mistakes, made Daniel see the man before him in a completely different light. The man paused for a moment, as if trying to dispel the heaviness in his soul, before continuing his story. I started spending time in casinos, where luck seemed to be on my side until the stakes became so high that I began to lose significant sums. But the real test of my life came later a relationship with a girl whose father was influential ended in scandal. Several months of romance led to unforeseen consequences she became pregnant, and I, consumed by ambition and a desire for freedom, refused to marry her. I was too young and not ready for family life at that time. I had just freed myself from my parents' care and couldn't allow anything to tie me down again. Her father found out about it, and his actions led to the downfall of my company. I found myself in deep debt, with creditors sparing no threats. They demanded immediate payment and even threatened my life and the safety of my family. In desperation, I turned to my father for help. I was honest with him, not hiding any detail of my failed life, and in his eyes I saw disappointment. It wasn't about the money I was asking for, but about my refusal to follow his advice and care. The look of disappointment in my father's eyes was more painful than any threat from my creditors. He asked me to come the next day. When I did, he had already prepared the necessary sum, even though his own affairs were not in the best state. A few months later, when I visited him to thank him, I found out that he had sold his house and business, giving me everything to the last cent and disappearing left without means. I moved to another city and started over, convincing myself that it was necessary to protect myself from the consequences of my past mistakes. My life gradually returned to normal, and I began to recover. I tried to find my father to repay him and show that I had changed and become better, but all my searches were in vain. Only recently, when his old friend contacted me and said that he had seen him in the park with a large black dog, did I realize that I had to try to meet him. But every time I came here, he wasn't around. Maybe he saw me and decided to avoid meeting. The man's voice trembled, and he took a deep breath, finishing his story. Now tell me, have you seen this man with the dog here? And does he look like the man in the photo? His voice was tense, his gaze fixed on the boy's face searching for an answer. Yes, I've seen him. It was definitely him, though it's hard to recognize him now. He has a big black beard, already completely gray, 
but his eyes, those laughing eyes, they haven't changed at all. It's definitely him, 100% the boy answered with a confident smile that gave him a touch of maturity. Thank God, that's something at least. Now I know he's alive. But how do I meet him? The man looked noticeably relieved but still worried. You should go home peacefully and not come here anymore. I think that as long as you're here, he won't show up. You're quite intimidating, and with security too, it's hard not to notice you, not to be afraid. It's better if you just leave me your phone number. I'm here almost every day. And if your father shows up again, I'll talk to him and pass on your request to meet. The boy suggested with surprising determination and maturity in his voice. Yes, you're probably right, the man nodded slowly, as if pondering the boy's words. He likely won't want to talk to me after everything I've done, after what I've condemned him to. But please, try to convince him to meet with me. I would be very grateful to you. He looked genuinely thankful and simultaneously empty, something like hope flickering in his eyes, as if the boy could be the bridge that would help him restore broken connections. More than two weeks passed since the man and the dog were last seen in the park. Despite the gloomy assumptions that the old man might not return, the boy continued to visit the park regularly. He kept hope and adhered to the promise he had made to himself to check if the elderly stranger had returned to his usual bench. Then, one day, when the autumn wind played with fallen leaves, the boy saw a familiar scene. The old man was sitting in his usual spot, and his faithful dog lay nearby, basking in the soft rays of the morning sun. The boy's heart raced with anticipation of the meeting. He quickly took an apple from his backpack and, approaching closer, greeted politely, Good day to you, his voice trembled with excitement as he offered the apple as a gesture of peace. At that moment, the dog, sensing the approach of a stranger, let out a low warning growl. Easy, you boy, easy, the old man said soothingly, addressing the dog but not taking his eyes off the boy. Don't be afraid of him, he's friendly, the old man added confidently, speaking to the boy. So it was you who had been giving me apples all this time, his face lit up with a smile filled with warmth and surprise. The old man continued, well, let's get acquainted, my friend. I'm sorry I haven't been around for a while. There were things to do, and there was someone I didn't particularly want to meet. I know everything the boy responded with a hand of seriousness in his voice. I met your son while you were away. He loves you very much, misses you, and wants me to apologize. Oh, so that's what it's about. Do you know what he did? That child, the old man's voice trembled, and his eyes filled with tears. I know. He told me everything, and I think it's time for you to forget the grievances and allow him to apologize. He's not as bad as he used to be. People change. They grow up. Your son is in contact with your grandson and helps him in every way. And if that woman who bore him a child could forgive him all the offenses and now has no claims against him, then you can forgive him for all his mistakes, or at least try to do so, the boy said convincingly. Do you really think he's changed, that he's become better, the old man asked his voice filled with hope. Yes, I'm sure of it. I swear, the boy said, laughing, trying to ease the tension. Well, okay, tell him I'm willing. I'll be waiting for him here tomorrow at the same time the man conceded, nodding in agreement, ready for a new chapter in his life. The next day, the park was enveloped in a warm morning. The sun had already begun to illuminate the morning coolness, and everything seemed unusually quiet as a father and son met on the familiar old bench. The old man was already sitting there, impatiently waiting for his boy to appear. The man who had once wronged the old man was now walking down the path, his heart pounding in anticipation of the meeting he had long awaited. The son approached slowly his steps were hesitant, but his gaze was filled with determination. They met with looks full of anxiety and hope. A moment of silence passed before they embraced tentatively at first, and then more and more tightly. It was their first touch in many years, full of forgiveness and longing for the lost time. Dad the son began, his voice trembling. I imagined this moment so many times, but now that it's here, I don't even know where to start. Just speak, son the father replied softly. We both made mistakes and I'm the last person to judge you. I'm just glad you're here." The old man's words eased the tension, and they began to talk. The son spoke about his travels and mistakes, 
about how life without his father had left a void in his heart. He talked about his business, his successes and failures, and how whenever faced with difficulties, he recalled his father's lessons. The father, in turn, shared his own wanderings, telling his son how he had lost everything but found peace in a simple life. He spoke about his new friend, a dog who had become his companion and helper in loneliness. He mentioned the apples that appeared on his bench every day, reminding him of the kindness in the world. When the conversation turned to past grievances, both of them found the strength to admit their faults. The son apologized for his pride and stubbornness, for not listening to his father when he tried to guide him on the right path. The father, in turn, expressed regret for his strictness and his inability to support his son in his endeavors. I was always proud of you, said the father, squeezing his son's hands, and I'm so sorry I couldn't show it. I'm proud of you too, dad the son replied, and I'm grateful for all the lessons you taught me, even if I understood them too late. As they walked through the park, they shared plans for the future. The son suggested that his father return home, that they rebuild their relationship and start a new life together. The father, with doubt in his eyes, weighed the proposal. He was used to his freedom, but also felt it was time to heal old wounds. Let's give it a try, he finally said. Maybe this is the second chance I've dreamed of. They continued walking, enjoying each other's company, intertwining the past with the present, building bridges across the chasm of years of separation. Now that they were together again, the world seemed less terrifying and lonely than before. As Daniel returned home that autumn evening, a new understanding of the world and family values and relationships began to form in his heart. The chance encounter in the park, the unexpected meeting with someone who turned out to be the son of a vagrant, and the reunion of the family shed light on many aspects of his own life. He thought about his father, about the many moments when he couldn't understand his father's concerns and worries. At home he was greeted by silence. His father was still at work, and Daniel had a place to be alone with his thoughts. He went up to his room, sat by the window, and began to recall every detail of the day that had passed. Thoughts of the old man and his son, of the complexity of their relationship, made Daniel see his own father in a new light. Maybe I'm too hard on him. Maybe he too faced difficult choices that I don't even know about, he pondered. These questions tormented him because he had always felt that his father simply didn't want to share his interests, especially when it came to wanting a dog. But now, seeing how deep the bonds between father and son could be, Daniel felt a strong desire to understand and forgive. With each day after returning from the park, Daniel tried to talk more with his father, to take an interest in his affairs, and to help around the house. He began to notice the little things that had previously escaped his attention, the weariness on his father's face after work, the care in his eyes when he looked at his son. Several months passed, and Daniel's birthday arrived. He turned nine years old. This birthday was special because his father gave him a puppy. When the small, fluffy bundle with its amusingly sticking ears jumped out of the box, Daniel's heart leapt with joy. I thought you'd earned him, son said his father, smiling through tears. I've seen how you've tried to understand me, how you've changed. This puppy is not just a gift, he's a symbol of our understanding and forgiveness. He'll grow up with you, and I hope he brings as much joy into our home as you've brought me. His father's words deeply touched Daniel. He realized that forgiveness and understanding are the keys to true and strong relationships. He promised himself that he would be just as attentive and caring a friend to his new pet as his father was to him. This birthday marked a new chapter in their relationship. Father and son continued to walk together with the dog, to talk, to laugh, and even sometimes to quarrel. But now they knew that they could always find a way to mutual understanding and forgiveness. Autumn had painted the park in golden and crimson hues when Daniel and his father took their new pet, named Charlie, for a walk. It was cool but sunny, the perfect weather for long walks. As they walked, a man who had once seemed like a vagrant passed by. But now his appearance had radically changed. He was neatly dressed and looked well-groomed. Beside him ran his faithful black dog, and on the other side walked a young man, his son, in an elegant suit. The meeting was unexpected for everyone, and Daniel, feeling excited, decided to introduce his father to these familiar faces from the park. Daniel's father, Richard, 
looked with interest at the former vagrant, who now appeared before him in a completely different light. Hello, my name is Richard, he said with a smile, extending his hand. Daniel has told me a lot about you, about your meetings in the park. It's nice to see you looking so well. The man smiled in response and shook his hand. Hello, Richard. My name is Edward, and this is my son, Jonathan. We've indeed changed a lot since we last saw Daniel here, thanks to your son, who once did me an invaluable favor by leaving apples on the bench. It was a gesture that helped me get back to a normal life. Richard expressed his admiration and support, and Jonathan added, We are truly grateful for your son's friendship and kindness. It inspired me to take steps to fix the situation as well. The two fathers exchanged experiences about raising children and talked about the difficulties they had faced. Daniel listened, holding Charlie on a short leash. The dog wagged its tail happily, sensing the joy and calmness of this meeting. The walk continued, and the men exchanged phone numbers. The air was full of confidence that the new friendships and shared interests would bring only joy and benefit to everyone. As they slowly walked away, Daniel felt a deep satisfaction with how events had unfolded. He realized that true changes begin with small acts of kindness that can lead to big and significant changes in the lives of the people around them.